Hey guys, today we will be looking at something a little bit different. Um, it's going to be something about global state management in React. So there's quite a few libraries that you can use to help you with this. You know, the first thing is the React Context API. So the, the basic definition, what we're trying to do or what we're trying to accomplish is provide a way to pass data through component tree without having to pass down props manually at every level. So this is a very basic description of what is the point of doing something like this. Um, and obviously context API will be the easiest solution for you, but there's quite a few different reasons why you might want to use something other than the context API. We won't get into those because um, obviously you're here to learn about MobX, um, but I just want to give you some alternatives. Um, there's there's also the very popular React Redux, which is used by many companies, which you can learn more about on this page. But what we're going to be looking at is the library called MobX. So what we'll do is go to our application here and it says add your code here. So I just have a simple, very simple application um, with the header body and an error boundary. So we're going to actually create a new component here. So I'm going to create a new file called to do list TSX. And in here we will import react first of all. And then we're going to create a component called to do list. And this is a very popular problem to solve if you want to try something new. Um, so this will be a function component and we'll just return a diff for now. To do list and to add in, add an interface to our props, we will just create an interface called to do list props, which will be empty for now. And react.fc is actually a generic type, so you can pass in to do list props inside of this and it'll add it to its own props. All right, great. So let's go to our app component and let's add our to do list. Okay, so now we have our to-do list right here. So let's go ahead and update our component. So what we'll add here is an input, first of all, to actually add to our to-do list. And right next to that, we will create a button for you know adding it to the list, which is called submit. And the type here will be text. And obviously to store to in order to submit with our submit button, we need to store the state of our input element. So we'll create a state variable in our component using use state, and this will be of type string. And you may not want to add a type here because it, it'll be inferred by the default value in the use state, but it's your preference. This will just call value and set value. So if you don't know how use state works is it returns a array of two elements in it. So the first one will be the actual state of your value and the second one will be a function that you can call to set the value. So that's perfect for us because the value here needs to be a string and when we when this changes we'll call on the on change hook which will be a function which will take it have an event in it. So this event, if you hover over this one, it'll say that it is a react.change event, which gives us the property for setting the value, which will be in event.target.value. So let's clean this up. Okay, so we have an input box which is now controlled. So that means we are controlling the value and how it changes with the, with our state. So the only thing left now is to add an on change handler to our submit button. Let's just see if all this works fine and we don't have any errors. Okay, all that looks good. The input element updates and submit does nothing. And one thing we should change is this should not be on change. It should be on click so that when we click the button, this, fu this function runs. Um, but what, sh what should we actually do in the on click? Well, we need to add it to our add this value to our to-do list. We don't actually have a to-do list, so let's create a new file for that. And we'll call it to-do store because we don't want our um, to-do list to live in our component. We actually want it to be centralized in a store. So we'll create a, a simple class for this called to-do store. And inside of here, we'll have one variable called to-dos, which will be an array 
uh, and it'll be initialized to an empty array, but we don't actually have a type here. So uh, instead of keeping this as any array, we should make an interface for our to-do items. So this will be a to-do item, which will be which will take an ID, and that'll be a number for now, and the title of the to-do, which will be string, and a completed, which will be boolean. So instead of being in any type, this will be to do item. And all classes in MobX should have a constructor. So in this constructor, we'll actually use a method from MobX called make observable. And that'll get auto imported from MobX, which will take two arguments. One is the instance of your store. So that'll just be this in this case, because we have a class. And the next argument will be an object with all your with all the properties of your instance. So in this case, we just have one called to dos. So to dos will actually be an observable, and that should be imported from MobX as well. Other than that, we do need an action. So an action is anything that mutates your state. So in this case, we need to add a an action called add to do, which will just take a title for now. So just a string. And we'll create our to do item called item, which will be of type to do item. And the ID, I'm just going to create a, a random ID. And this is probably not the best um, way of creating an ID because it, it could be duplicated or it could we could have multiple of the same IDs. You should use something like a server side ID in this case. And the title will just be the title and completed will always be false when you first create the item. So we should now also add it to our to-do list. So to-dos.push item. So what you'll notice, we are actually mutating the to-dos array. Now this is one of the benefits of using MobX. You can say that in things like React, Redux, or the context API, you are not allowed to update any of the props. So instead of creating a new array and adding it to the new array and then setting the to do's array to that new array, we are actually just pushing it to the same array. And MobX will take care of informing all of our components that to do's array has been updated. And the last thing we need to do is make sure that add to do is, is in action. So we can give it a type and we also import this from MobX. So to do's is an observable, which comes from MobX. Add to do is an action, which mutates the to do's array, which it comes from MobX as well. And so the last thing we should do is to the store should always be a singleton, unless you want multiple instances of this store. But in our case, we're just going to create an instance or a single instance. So we'll call it to do store. And we, we can actually call it the same thing. So call this one to do store implementation and change that right here. So we'll always use this instance of the to do store. All of our components will look at the same to do instance. For our to do list, the way we'll interact with the store is via, via props. So in the props, we'll take a to do store, which will be of type to do store implementation and We'll destructure that right here to do store so that we can use it. And inside of our app, we just need to pass it down. So in this file, we'll actually use the instance that we created, which will be to do store. So the first thing we can do is inside of our to do store, we can add a add to do, which will just be the value. So whatever value is inside of this variable, we'll, we'll add it to the list. And to actually view the array of to do's, we'll create a UL and map over the to do items. So to do store dot to do's dot map, which will give us. And here we'll just return an li with the name of the to do or title. So let's just type in something and press submit. No, so now nothing is actually happening. So why is that? We, we are looping over the list here and we're on change, we're setting the value to the state and on, on click of the button, we're adding it to the to do. So the problem is, even though we are looking at the store component, we're not actually create making 
this component an observer of the store. So this component does not have any idea that something has changed in the to-do store because remember, the to-do store does not change. It's always the same instance. It's the properties inside of to-do store that are changing. So MobX actually has a observer or actually MobX React has an observer higher order function. So this will actually, we should actually pass in our component into the observer higher order function and then it will make sure that uh, everything from the store actually gets updated as a prop. So now, now that we have wrapped it in the observer function, we should be able to see our changes. So since I pressed submit so many times, we have so many new to do's added. But if I refresh now and type in one and press submit once, you can see our UI is updated. So we can actually keep going and add new functionality. One thing that you should probably add is we can have a function for to do or toggle to do, which will take an ID, which is a number, and it will just toggle it completed true or false. So the first thing we can do is get grab the index. So we'll grab the index by the ID which was passed in. And if the index is more than negative one, so it's a valid index, we will say this dot to do's dot or index dot completed is, is equal to the opposite of, of this variable. So we'll just add a sort of bang there and save that. So remember, whenever you add a new action, we have to add it to the constructor uh, make observable function call. So we have a new action called toggle to do, which is an action. Now we won't actually see anything update on the UI because we don't really have anything that says that it's completed. So I'll just, I'll just create something here that can tell us that it's actually been completed. We can check if to do dot completed then we will render an X, otherwise we will render a space. So when, whenever we click on the LI, we can call something in the to-do store, just like we did here, add to-do. So what we can do is to-do store dot toggle to-do, and here we will say to-do dot ID. We will add one, two, and when we mark them completed, it actually toggles it. It's very weird that this does not go away, so I can just keep clicking. Um, the if statement should actually be right here. So if value exists, then we do something, otherwise we do nothing. And the, the other nice thing about MobX is that you can see I've updated the code and this has refreshed with the new functionality that I just added, but our our store is still there and our store does not reset, which is rare to see in most. So you can see that this one was a hard refresh. So the last thing I wanted to show you is something called a computed value. Computed value is, does not actually change the store, but it gives you more information about the store. So to understand this, we can add something called completed and this will just show a number on how many to do's we have completed. And the next thing might be remaining. So how many to do's you actually have remaining. So let's try and compute that from in our to do store. So we'll add a new method called get completed or get status. And this will be a get method. So, so this is actually a get method, not a regular method. So from within this method, we actually want to return an object with completed and remaining. So we'll create two variables, one called completed and initialize it to zero, and one called remaining, initialize to zero. And then we'll loop through our to-dos list. And if to-do.completed is true, we will say completed plus plus. Otherwise, we will say remaining plus plus. And at the end, we will just return one single object for completed and remaining. So this get status is is there and it'll work, but it is no longer it, it's not actually registered up here. So we'll say get status or actually just status. 
and this will be a computed which will also come from MobX. So now what we can do is get that value whenever this component renders. So we'll get the status equal to do store and the way you access a get method is just by the property value. So just like you would use any variable inside of to do store, you can access it just like that. So here what we can display is status dot completed and here we can display status dot remaining. And let's add a line in, in the middle here. And if I go up here and add one, so now we have remaining one and completed zero. So if I keep adding more and more, this also updates along with our component. And if I mark one off, this automatically updates up here. So computed values basically give you more metadata about your store instead of changing the store. So those are some of the basics that you should know about MobX and how it can help you create your application and be more flexible. So you can use this to-do store in any part of your application and the three main ideas in MobX are that variables are observables and to update your observable, you need an action. And the computed values are basically computed out of your store without actually updating the store. So if you have any more questions or if you'd like to see more content about MobX, please let me know in the comments down below. And please subscribe if you want to learn more about JavaScript, front end, and everything related to that.